Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Rhonda Cofelt and we are going to have a discussion today about atoms. And in this first part, we're going to distinguish between the three main states of matter. We're going to classify that matter by what state it's in and what the composition is. And then as part of that composition classification, that's going to allow us using a flow chart to differentiate between mixtures and pure substances, elements, compounds, and then different types of mixtures. So starting from the basics, matter is composed of particles. Okay, and you can either have atoms, molecules, some of these subatomic particles, combinations of all of those together. How the particles come together is going to tell us what the physical properties of that matter are because I could have the same elements come together and form a molecule in different ways and they would have completely different functions. Matter is defined as anything that has mass and occupies space or another way of saying that has volume. So mass and volume must be a characteristic if it's going to be matter. Okay, chemistry is the study of matter and we try to explain how that matter is working, why it does what it does, and how it comes together. So we're, when you have the, the building block, which is an atom, okay, and it is what we start with and we take those atoms and then we build, we join them together using bonds and we form molecules and the molecules are going to be composed of two or more atoms okay and they're going to be in very specific shapes and those are going to determine how it behaves so when we classify matter based on state okay that's our typical solid liquids and gases composition is where we're going to talk about what kind of particles go into that what elements what atoms what bond what types of bonds and we're going to get more and more detail into that as we go along the state of matter can change from one thing to another if you increase or decrease the temperature notice here and i'm going to i'm going to show you some blow up so you can see these a little bit better but we have our different phases of our states of matter and it's a lot about how those molecules and those atoms are arranged so solid matter, notice that they're all packed together in this nice geometric form, okay? And all matter has movement between these atoms, okay? But in a solid, it, like if you imagine yourself in a crowded elevator, and you know, if you've ever been like in the city or whatever, and or in Europe, and people don't mind like touching you, okay? And you're all like touching each other and people are in front and back. You could move, but you can't move much. And so that's kind of how it is with solids. And so because of that, they have a rigid shape and they have a fixed volume. So that means that they're not going to take the volume of or the shape of their container. If you put a chunk of something in an Erlenmeyer flask, it doesn't matter if you put it in that flask or if you put it in a beaker, they're going to still be that chunk of solid in there. It's not going to change shape and its volume will be the same. Okay, so pieces of metal, a diamond, um, ice, Okay, that's kept at temperature. Those things are good examples of solids. Liquid, on the other hand, notice that the molecules are slightly more separated from each other. They have a little bit more room. They're still not, you know, bouncing everywhere, but they can move. And solid atoms are very fixed, whereas liquid have a fixed volume. Okay, the volume's not going to change, but their shape can change because of that ability to move and glide between each other. And so they will tend to take the shape of whatever container you put them in. So that's for a liquid. And examples of that are water, gasoline, um, honey, things like that. A gas or gaseous matter, there's a lot of space between those molecules. 
And so they can pretty much move freely anywhere they want to, and they do. And the warmer they get, the faster they move, uh, and the more they move. And so what makes gases really interesting is one thing called compressibility. Because they are so far apart, I can put pressure on that space where those molecules are, and I can make them get closer and closer together. So I can compress that gas. Solids and liquids, not so much. Solids you can't compress because they're not going to change volume no matter what you do, but your liquids, technically you could compress them, but for our purposes, you can't compress a liquid either. It's not enough for us to make a difference in general chemistry. So the only thing that we consider compressible are gases. And that's because the, the molecules are so far apart. So when we classify these by components, okay, or composition, rather than state, like we just saw, um, that we have some divisions, and I've got them in words for you here about pure substances and mixtures and things like that. Pure substances are one thing, okay? It could be a molecule, it could be an atom, but it's only one thing. A mixture is made up of two or more things, and it's not necessarily the same exact proportions throughout the mixture, okay? A pure substance is going to be that, no matter where you look in that bucket of, of the pure substance, it's going to be the same. Pure substances are either going to be elements or compounds. Okay? An element can't be chemically broken down into simpler substances. So that's as far as you can go. A compound, however, is two or more elements, and you could chemically take those and form other combinations of elements. Mixtures can either be heterogeneous or homogeneous. Heterogeneous means different. Homogeneous means the same. If you've heard of homogenized milk, milk is made up of liquid, like water-soluble things, and also of fat. And to get those two together, you have to homogenize them by heating them at low temperatures and mixing them slowly until you get them to form one homogeneous mixture. So you can't tell the difference where the fat is and where the liquid is. If you've ever had raw milk, raw milk will separate if you don't drink it pretty quickly or you keep it shaken up because it hasn't been homogenized. So it's heterogeneous until you go through that process. So one thing to say is if you took a sample of a heterogeneous mixture in different places, then you would get different things. So like when I make a salad and I have lettuce um, and tomatoes and carrots and different things in there, I can't get that homogenized really. So this is going to be a heterogeneous mixture because one one forkful might just be lettuce. Another, I might have all three things. Some of them might have salad dressing on them. So that's heterogeneous, okay? Whereas if I have tomato soup that's been pureed and I take a spoonful, it's the same every time. That would be homogeneous, okay? All right, so the way we go through this is we use a flow chart and we ask ourselves some questions. And you'll see flow charts throughout science and chemistry is no, um, no different. You, in this particular one, though, you've got matter. So you know that it has mass and volume. It takes up space. It's got, it's got um, some atoms or whatever. Okay, is it one type of particle? If it's one type of particle, then yes. So yes, it is. And so that means it's a pure substance. It, can I separate it into smaller pieces? If I can't, it's an element. If I can, it's a compound. Because I could separate that into elements. Chemically, okay? 
All right, on the other side of that, if it's not only one type of particle, it's a mixture, period. Is it uniform throughout? No, it's heterogeneous. If it is homogeneous throughout, it is homogeneous or homogeneous if you want to say that, that's fine. Okay, so we use this to make decisions about whether something is or is not a mixture, a pure substance, homogeneous or heterogeneous. You go through that mental logic tree and decide which one it is. And that's really the kind of questions you may see is to apply that information.